Sola Scriptura, everyone. This is His Word Only. All right, before we get into this, I do want to apologize for not getting the video out on Monday. I had some things come up, and I kind of spaced it. And I apologize to you guys for that. All right, let's get into this. So today, we're going to go into Leviathan and the Dragons of the Sea. And we're going to start out with, of course, Leviathan. This is what it means. A large aquatic animal or vessel, a whale, a sea monster, an aquatic animal described in the book of Job. And mentioned in other passages of scripture, the whale or a great whale. And also, uh, this is going to be pretty much a little bit of a review, if you've seen the um, Satan Seraphim video, the first one. But anyways, so there's that. Now here's the Job 41. Job 41. Canst thou draw out Leviathan with a hook, or his tongue with a cord, which thou lettest down? Canst thou put a hook in his nose, or bore his jaw through with a, with a thorn? Will he make many supplications unto thee? Will he speak soft words unto thee? Hmm. Will he make a covenant with thee? Will thou take him for a servant forever? Will thou play with him as with a bird, or wilt thou bind him for any maidens? Shall the companions make a banquet of him? Shall they part him along with the merchants, or along, along, among the merchants? Sorry. Canst thou fill his skin with barbed irons, or his head with fish spears? Lay thine hand upon him, and remember the battle. Do no more. Behold, the hope of him is in vain. Shall not one be cast down even at the sight of him? Now, if you saw that other seraphim video or whatever, I believe that Satan possessed Leviathan. This is where you get in the whispers and making a covenant with thee and, and all that. Anyways. Lay the hand upon him, remember the battle to the mar, behold the hope of it, him is in vain. And none is so fierce that dare stir him up, for who then is able to stand before me? None is so fierce. Oh, sorry, behold the hope of him is in vain, shall not one be cast down even at the sight of him. Sorry, Mr. Anyways. Who hath prevented me that I should repay him? Whosoever is under the whole heaven is mine, and will not conceal his parts, nor his power, nor his commonly proportion. Who can discover the face of his garment, or who can come to him with his double bridle? Who can open the doors of his face? His teeth are terrible round and bound. His scales are his pride shut up together as with a close seal. One is so near to another that no air can come between them. They are joined one to another. They stick together, that they cannot be sundered. By his kneesings a light doth do a shine, and his eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. There might be a connection to Lucifer there. Out of his mouth go burning lamps, and sparks of fire leap out. Out of his nostrils go smoke, as out of the seething pot or cauldron. His breath kindled coals, and flame goeth out of his mouth. In his neck remaineth strength, and sorrow is turned to joy before him. The flakes of his flesh are joined together, they are firm, themselves, or firm in themselves, they cannot be moved. His heart is firm as stone, yea, as hard as piece of nether millstone. When he raiseth up himself, the mighty are afraid. By reason of breakings, they purify themselves. 
who can make war with him. So if we do the sword of him that layeth at him. Now, I'm not saying that he is Lucifer, but there's something to this. The sword of him that layeth at him cannot hold the spear, the dart, nor the harpagian, or begin, whatever that is. He esteemeth iron as straw, and brass as rotten wood. The arrow cannot make him flee. Sling stones are turned with him unto stubble. Darts are counted as stubble. He laughed at the shaking of a spear. Sharp stones are under him. He spreadeth the sharp pointed things upon the mire. He maketh the deep to boil like a pot. He maketh the sea like a pot of ointment. He maketh a path to shine after him. One would think deep to be hoary, which means gray hair. Now there's something to that. This deep. Now I don't know if I necessarily agree with, you know, now you see TV on the deep, but I will put that out there here in a second. Anyways, upon the earth there is not not his like who is made without fear. He beholdeth all high things. He is king over all the children of pride. Here it is. Anyways, now here's the deep thing. And the earth is with, now I'm not saying that I don't agree with him. I'm just kind of in the middle. I'm not sure what I think about this juice yet. I am going to put it out there. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now what they're saying is that the deep is an entity here, and a part of, and it could be, because you have Tiamat here. Okay, we'll go, we'll go Tiamat, Tiamat, Mesopotamian Mother Goddess. Chaos to creation. Tiamat is ambiguous deity, deity who played an important role in creation of myth of ancient Mesopotamia. She was their personification of primordial sea. So they might have something to this, from which the first generation of gods were born. And now something too, I may have to revise some of that Lilith stuff. Because I'm reading this, and a lot of it, or it could be the same person, I, I have no idea. But um, the patron D, um, generation of gods were born, eventually Tiamat is defeated by Marduk. The patron deity of Babylon. And, yeah, I'll go to that here in a second here, but. So that woman who sits on um, the beast, or here, I'll go to that real quick. I have it here anyways. Okay. And it stood upon the sand of the sea, and the beast rise up out of the sea, having seven hands and ten horns, to, or, and, and his horns, uh, oh, not yet, this way, so, carry me away into the spirit. Blasphemy having seven heads and ten horns. She carried me to, or she carried me away. Anyways, it says the mother of harlots. You know, I could either be the Lilith character that I was talking about, and or this person. See, like what you guys are seeing is, is I don't know at all, you know, and I'm always gonna be learning, and I could be wrong on some of the things I put out there. But I'm just putting out there what I see. You know. And you, it's up to you guys to make. You know. A determination of that. You know. I'm just putting it all out there. That's Tiamat. And it, Tiamat could very well be that deep. That the face of the deep. You know. Having long hair. And gray hair. And stuff. You know. I mean who knows. But. Anyways, this is probably, you know, what Leviathan looks like. Multiple heads here. It's always depicted as with multiple heads. 
Now all the dragons of the sea doesn't look like they have multiple hits, but this Leviathan character does, it seems like. Here we go. Psalm 74, 12 through 14. For God is my king of old, working salvation in the midst of the earth. Thou didst divide the sea by thy strength. Thou breakest the heads of the dragons in the waters. Thou breakest the heads of Leviathan in pieces, and gavest him to be meat to the people inhabiting the wilderness. And what I see here, right, thou breakest the heads of Leviathan in pieces, this to me is saying that Leviathan is the beast of the sea. And here we go. In that day, the Lord, his, um, his sore and great and strong sword, shall punish Leviathan, the piercing serpent, even Leviathan, that crooked serpent. And he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. This is the same type of language that's given to Satan, right? That serpent, that serpent of old and all that. So, in my opinion, I think Satan possessed this character when he deceived Eve, and then also, now he, he also could have been in his fi final form, or not given, or his original form of Seraphim, but, you know, we're not given that. To me, it seems like he possessed this character, because what happens when he gets cast back into the earth? This thing shows up. The beast of the sea. Here we go. So he carried me away into the spirit of the wilderness. You know, let's read the whole chapter. Or not the whole chapter, but some of it. And he came, um, one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials. And this is from the um, the Lilith um, verses that I had in there. But um, here we go. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show ye thee the judgment of the great whore that sinneth upon many waters. Now I still think that this is Lilith here. You know, because it does say that she, <laughs> the great owl layeth at her eggs. You know. But anyways, because that Tiamat, was another sea monster, and I don't see it, but it could, it could be her, it could be, anyways, who, or with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and inhabitants of the earth have been made, see, this is where it loses me on the Tiamat thing, this is where Lilith comes in, this is what she does, basically, she's like a breeder, kind of, anyways, Fornication, inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit in the wilderness. And the beast, um, and I saw a woman sit upon the scarlet colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Okay. Here we go. Revelation 13, and I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Now what it say here, this thou divide the sea by strength, break the heads of dragons, you know, multiple heads. And then, what does it say here? Even the light and the crooked serpent, he shall slay, or, um, sorry, the sword great strong shall punish Leviathan, the piercing serpent, even Leviathan, the great serpent shall slay the dragon. Uh, where is it? Sorry. Might be here. Here. He, oh, yeah. He abideth all high things. He is the king over all the children of pride. So, his head's the name of blasphemy. Now, this is where I'm kind of a little confused on it, because it 
but to me this is saying given what does it say here he is king over all the children of pride and these are nations here right we know that from daniel so this is given symbol the symbols of the leviathan to me but using the nations you know as symbolism right and then what does it say here and i saw one of the heads one of his heads as it were wounded to death and his deadly wound was healed and all the world wondered after the beast and they see now it says it's healed and it's acting like an entity but then you know and then they worshiped the dragon which gave power unto the beast and they worshiped the beast saying see right here this is where they worship the dragon which gave power unto the beast so it means the beast is being controlled by satan somehow some way and the beast and they worship the beast saying who is like unto the beast who is to make war with him it's like like all this you know he esteemed iron and straw, brass wrought into wood. The sword of him that layeth on him cannot hold. The spear, the dart, nor the harbinger. He esteem, esteemeth iron as straw, and brass as the rotten wood. It's the same language going on here. You know, who is able to make war with him? And there's a three-prong effect here. You know, you have Satan controlling the beast, and whoever this character is, is also going to control Lucifer. Because, yeah. It's the same kind of aspect with, you know, um, And behold, another beast coming, or er, he leadeth cap. Blah, blah blah blah. I'm sorry, guys. Hold on. I go upon the earth to worship him, and is given unto him to make war with the saints. Here we go. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. Now, to me, I think this is a man coming at or you know using lucifer or something and power was given unto him to continue 40 in two months or what it could be is you know or nimrod you know or who knows who knows you know but anyways we're beating that to death so basically the beast of the sea, in my opinion, is the Leviathan, which is controlled by Satan. And now, um, you, I guess you could see maybe Leviathan being Lucifer, but I see Lucifer being created, and he was thrown down into the abyss. So, I think he's going to play a big pivotal role he's the one that comes out of the abyss you know and then probably possesses a man and then and he opened his mouth and blasphemy against god blasphemy in his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven who did that lucifer right and nimrod those are two people that i see that both have had some kind of wounds, <laughs> you know, and brought down to the abyss. Now, I don't know if Nimrod ever was, but you see Lucifer being brought down to the abyss. Right. I'm going to, I always like to end it off with good news, with the doctrine of Christ. Revelation 17, 14. He shall make war with the Lamb. And the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is the Lord of lords and King of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And we need to start acting like it.
you know. People are waking up. But they're waking up to the right side or the left side, you know. And you got people from the left that are going over to the right side because the left is crazy and blah, 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 blah. They're grifters. Right? I mean, but all, both sides, you have to remember this is a theory. It's the WWE. If you look, you know, Trump has connections with China now with his, um, his, um, what is it called? His social media company coming from the Cayman Isles, right? Which is that, that fund that is there is owned by a Chinese, you know, national and, uh, is owned by the CCP. So that means both Joe Biden and Donald Trump are connected to China, in my opinion. That should tell you something. That both sides are corrupt. And the truth belongs with Jesus Christ. That's about it. You know, that's the truth. If you don't believe me, test it out yourself. That's all you can do. Don't sit here and try to troll me and blah, 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 when you yourself haven't read the Bible. Do you read the Bible yourself? Don't say a word. I mean, it's the truth. If you haven't experienced it yourself, then don't say anything at all. Because you have no skin in the game. And if you're basing it off of what a pastor did or what someone else is saying, they probably weren't Christian. Or at least acting like they're supposed to be. You know, it's stupid. Anyways, I hope you guys learned something from this. It's probably not one of my best videos. They they never are. <laughs> you know, it's a little rough. You know, and but I I like showing you guys the raw stuff. You know, even when I look stumped or I stump myself. You know, or whatever. And maybe I'll change my opinion during a video. Because I'll see something, you know. I'm not here to try to tell you guys what is and what isn't. I just want you guys to see where I'm coming from, you know. And maybe lead you guys to the truth, you know. To you, yourselves, reading the Bible, you know. And that, so people who aren't Christian see this. And they see somebody who's like, wow, you know. This guy ain't some rich scholar or trying to sell me something, you know, he's actually trying to tell me the truth, you know, and that's why I don't sit here and say, like and subscribe, you know, which is fine if you do that, but you're either going to like it or you're not, you know, anyways, hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I thank you for all that you guys have done for me, and for watching my videos.